3,000 years ago, the prophet Joel saw a prophecy about Israel that is coming true right before our eyes. That Israel would be divided in a two-state solution to create an independent Palestinian state. And he wrote about it in the book of the Bible that bears his name. That is interesting. But what is even more interesting is that he saw the results of that two-state solution on nations and groups that are pushing for this. You know, people like the USA, Saudi Arabia, the United Nations, and also the effects on Israel. If you're like most believers or non-believers, you can only guess what's going to happen if the world enters into this two-state solution. But today, we're going verse by verse through that section of Joel, and we're going to see what the Word of God says will happen. This is Bible teacher Nelson Walters. And over the past year, the eyes of the entire world have been fixed on Israel. Everyone on the planet, I believe, is longing to see the conflict in the Middle East end. The two-state solution, the creation of that independent Palestinian state, is what many think will bring peace and stability to the region. Lots of believers in Jesus are for this idea. And lots of other Christians are radically opposed to the idea. But what we as believers think will work to bring peace shouldn't matter at all. What should matter is what God wants and what God commands. That is our position on this channel. God's position should be our only position. It's not what we think, but what he thinks. No matter what we believe is fair or right, it doesn't matter. All that matters is what God has already had to say on this subject in his word. Now, this happens to be a very sensitive subject in the media today. We happen to have a great deal of inside information for you about what's going on behind the scenes. But we cannot openly share everything we want on this platform. That's why we created Return of Jesus Watch Party. So on Saturday, July 13th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're holding our second Return of Jesus Watch Party on this subject because we really want to get this information out to you. Our guests will be Middle East and end time expert John Haller. The last day's overcomer team of myself, Marquis Laughlin, and Jake McCandless will discuss this topic with him in depth on a free one-hour watch party. It's not going to take all day. And later in this video, you can find out how to attend this watch party on our private webinar platform, where we can say just about anything we want without censorship. And yes, I did say it's going to be free. But before we give you the link, let's talk about why this subject is so crucially important. First, Jesus has said that he is going to judge the non-Jewish nations of the world, based on this criterion. So if you happen to live in the USA, what your politicians are doing right now in this regard will impact your entire nation. If you live in any other nation affiliated with the UN, this decision will impact you also because they're involved, perhaps in a devastating way. Second, this dividing of Israel may be the most important feature in the covenant with the many from Daniel 9.27, which many of you who follow prophecy know launches the 70th week of Daniel, the tribulation, the final seven years of man's rule on earth. So with all of that at stake, let's dig into the prophet Joel and see what he records. The passage begins in Joel 3, verses 1 through 3. For behold, in those days, and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, here Jesus is saying he has to restore Israel, so it's going to crash and burn somehow. Jesus continues, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat is a Hebrew word, actually a name that means God has judged. So it's just the place of judgment. And I will enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people, and my heritage, Israel. 
because they have scattered them among the nations and have divided up my land. There it is. And have cast lots for my people and have traded a boy for a prostitute and have sold a girl for wine and have drunk it. So upon his return, Jesus is going to restore the fortunes of Judah, which is the West Bank, and Jerusalem, and judge the nations based on how they treated the Jews. Okay, let's stop right there. Our world is filled with anti-Semitism today. It's all over the media. It's on the college campuses. It's in social media, and even in many churches, it's everywhere. But upon the return of Jesus, he is going to judge the Gentile, non-Jewish nations based on how they treated the Jews. He's going to treat you and me based on how we treat them. So you might say, hey, you know, those people in Israel, they aren't really Hebrews. I hear this all the time. The church has replaced Israel, I hear. Are you sure if those are your positions that it's so right that you're willing to face Jesus about this on Judgment Day? Because I can guarantee you, based on what it says in Joel, that you will face him on Judgment Day on that issue. The passage in Joel focuses on three things for which the nations will be judged. The nations as a whole. First, for scattering the people among the nations. This means that shortly, a large number of people in Israel will be taken into captivity. They'll be taken prisoner out of Israel and into other nations. You know, kind of like a second Holocaust going into concentration camps. Zechariah the prophet speaks of this same thing in Zechariah 14.2. I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses plundered, and the women raped. Half of the city shall go into exile, but the rest of the people shall not be cut off from the city. And who does this? In Ezekiel chapter 5, he recounts the same issue, the same event, and he tells it is, it is the nations all around Israel, surrounding Israel. Joel, prophet Joel, is going to narrow this down even further to two specific people groups in a couple of verses. So this tells us what's in store for Israel in the near future. The second thing Jesus judges the nations for is the dividing of his land. And notice in this verse, he called it my land, and he called Israel my people. Jesus calls Israel his own possession. So no matter what you believe is right or just, take it up with Jesus, the Lord of heaven and earth. He calls Israel his land, and he can give it to whoever he wants. And he has chosen to give it to the Hebrew people. And Jesus will judge the nations harshly for dividing what they don't own. And that's going to be the topic of our discussion on July 13th. Behind the scenes information on what's happening between the nations right now and more prophetic background of why these things are happening. The third thing that Jesus judges the nations for is selling the Hebrews into slavery. Look what it says in Joel 3, verses 3 and 6. And have cast lots for my people, and have traded a boy for a prostitute, and sold a girl for wine, and have drunk it. You have sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks, in order to remove them far from their own border. So there's going to be the selling of children for sinful things. I think we will all be glad when Jesus judges the people who are going to do this. And by the way, in this passage, the nation translated the Greeks is actually Yavon. And if you follow this channel, you know it is more likely Turkey than the Greeks. So it appears a lot of slaves are going to be going to that locale. Then Jesus tells us who is behind all this. What are you to me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the regions of Philistia. Are you paying me back for something? Joel 3, 4. So God knows who's behind this. 
He calls them Tyre, Sidon, and Philistia. But many of our followers don't know who Tyre or Sidon is in the modern world. It happens to be that country, a nation run by this group. Who is Philistia? In the modern world, it's this country, a nation run by this organization. Yes, those guys. So this is as fresh a prophecy as today's news, even if it was written 3,000 years ago. The two-state solution and the nations around about Israel are all involved. And Israel is going to open the door to the impacts on them that we saw in the prophets, Joel, Ezekiel, Zechariah, by entering into this agreement to divide their land. Most think it leads to peace, but it leads to another invasion, a much more severe one that we saw in the prophets, where half of Jerusalem is taken captive and sold into slavery. Think about what you have seen recently in the last year and how bad it is in this regard. Well, just wait until the Joel and Zechariah prophecies come to their fulfillment. So that's what happens to Israel. What's going to happen to those who gather against Jerusalem is much worse because God is going to deal out his vengeance for these acts. Zechariah details it in one of the most horrific passages in the Bible about those who defy the Lord. In fact, it's so graphic <laughs> that we're going to share it on our watch party, but not in this video. So that's what the prophets have to say about the dividing the land of promise. We have so much more to share with you, though, about the specific inside information about what's happening in our world and possibly involving the nations you live in, as it just whirls toward this consummation. But that will have to wait for July 13th and our guest, John Haller. In the description is a link to the free registration for that event. Also remember, you will be able to ask questions relevant to that topic. So come prepared with your best questions about that topic. Please try to stay on subject because we can only take questions that are about the two-state solution. And although this event is free and censorship free, the number of online guests is limited to 1,000. So register as soon as possible because there won't be any seats left and then you'll be disappointed. This is Nelson and I'll see you there.